and gentlemen, welcome to and or not the, the <laughs> welcome to Stardom Review. It's been a while since I did it. We've done this show. That's why I almost tripped up. I am your co-host, the the man with not the good mouth, Andre C. And right over here, it's the epic princess herself, the princess of Oedo Tai. It's Melball. How you doing, Melball? I am doing great, Andre. That was a very interesting day today. I ended up freeing up my morning. I got to watch. I've been watching wrestling all day long. Yeah, me too. (laughs) (laughs) Finishing up one of the shows we're about to talk about, the 28th. I've watched three G1 nights. I've only watched one so far, and I'm spending the rest of my night tonight watching, and then probably some of tomorrow. Then I still want to watch the Mari Gold show from last week, and... We have a lot. We have a lot. So we're going to get yeah. through this quickly so that we can get back to watching wrestling. Yep, so, that's right. Andre, wrestling. how are you doing? I'm doing pretty darn well. Uh, it's been an intro. Just a day of, again, stuff freed up this morning. Um, mm-hmm. So ended up watching a bunch of wrestling all day. Uh, went and got some groceries, you know, all that, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. And now I'm talking with you, and then I'm going to go watch more wrestling, and then I'm going to watch more wrestling tomorrow. I have a very interesting interview that will be coming up on the channel in the next week or so. It'll probably come out next week. We'll, we'll drop it because we got a lot coming out this week. Uh, so mm-hmm. that'll be coming out. A special Chop Talk interview with uh, lo- a local independent professional wrestler who will, it, it will be good. There will be more information coming out in the coming days after we record it. So, yeah. Lots, lots coming up. Lots coming up. Lots of good day prepping for that. Watching wrestling all day, you know, fun day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a fun, a fun, exciting time on Andre Melville Wrestling Talk right now. Without further ado, take us into the the intro, my friend. Yeah, the so intro yeah. with the intro. <laughs> We're gonna talk some stardom. Uh, I can't remember the name of the show. Stardom. In Sapporo Wonder Rendezvous. But before we do that, I want to thank each and every single one of you. We really do appreciate all the great support you've given us uh, here. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Uh, don't forget to uh, uh, share us out, tell your friends, family, and just epic, epic wrestlers that you know. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Epic ding dong. Not so epic. Hello. Ah, rude. Well, no, rude. My, 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 my hello will never be as epic as your ding dong. That's what I'm saying. It won't be as, not so epic. So come on. <laughs> as your ding dong. <laughs> uh, oh, well, this is just an interesting way to start a show. <laughs> it is. It is. And, you know. <laughs> It wouldn't be us if it wasn't. No. <laughs> oh my god. Sephora One Wonder Rendezvous. Let's get into it. We're gonna, we're gonna start with the 27th. Yes. And we kick it off with Mayu Itani versus Hanako. I know there was a pre-show, but I didn't watch either pre-show matches on either day. Because that I did. Job. Okay, give it okay. Before we go into this one, can you give us a quick result on the on the pre-show for to the 27th? So the pre-show was a fatal four-way between Rian, Zena, Hina, and Lady C. Um, so um I, I just want I commented very briefly on Lady C's look. She's still rocking her, her kind of Queen's Quest gear, but she's got the shorter haircut and the fun little anime ears. I think they're really cute. Uh, she is heavily taped, though, still. That lower back and, and hips are clearly still a problem for her. Now her one elbow is also heavily taped. Um, I'm hoping that there could be some time for her to take take a little bit of time away to, to kind of rest that up, see if she can get whatever's going on back there to to not be such a flare up um she hit the uh, airplane spin on rian rian so little it looked really really good um there was a suplex kip up combination by xena she's so athletic so quick for you know sometimes you think that the girls when they're very thick and muscular that they're not going to be as flexible i mean brian cage and xena are definitely great represent 
representation said that is not necessarily always the case. Um, there was a hook, cut, kick, and chop combo by Xena also that knocked Hina down pretty good. Um, but the end came when there was like a 3D done by Hina and Lady C on Rianne, followed by a big splash by Hina. And Hina picked up the win. So Lady C gave the win away? She didn't really give it away so much as she was yeeted out of the ring by Hina. <laughs> Isn't Hina like her part, like her teammate now, though? Uh, Thank God's eye. Oh, no, wait, yet. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, I read this wrong. It was Rian and Xena versus Hina and Lady C. Not a fatal Oh, fight. so it was a tag match. It was a tag match. So Hina and her were, she yeeted herself out the ring. Okay, that makes more sense. It does. It does. That's my mistake. I read that wrong. Oh, Jesus. I was like, this why is why I, I should be wearing my glasses while I'm doing this. Oh, God. Hey, chill. At least I watched the match. Yeah, it wasn't on the thing I, I was watching because I didn't watch it on Saturn World. I watched it on a copy I got from an alternative source. And the match wasn't there. So that's why. Wow. I'm happy I paid for these things. <laughs> Yeah, because you get to watch it. <laughs> we move on to my first official sh match on the show, not the pre-show, which, according to Andreas, doesn't count. Um, my, he, he always says the zero hour doesn't count. That's what always, he always says every time we do it. And yet he's show. always over there early on time to watch it. Yep. Yep. He's crazy. We have Mayu Itani versus Hanako. Hanako very much getting the power advantage throughout this match. She gets a Boston Crab early on. Um mm -hmm. Maya ends up drop kicking hand to the floor, gets that tope suicida. Uh, they come in back in with Maya hitting a drop kick off the top. Uh, great strike off at center. Hanako dropping Mayu twice, gets the corner splash. Uh, she misses the big boot, but catches Mayu uh, in the coming coming at her and hits her with a backbreaker. She gets that high thigh grip uh, Boston Crab on, then transitions into that single leg crab. Uh, but Mayu does get to the ropes. Um, Mayu fighting off the torture rack with a beautiful crucifix driver. Um, she hits a super kick, then a release German, and they're both down. Mayu gets the frog splash off the top, but Hanako kicks at a 2.9. Mayu misses the top rope moonsault. Hanako hits the running boot and hits a, gets a torture rack into the K. Oh, D, but Mayu kicks out at 2.9. Mayu comes back with kicks, hits the super kick, goes to the top, hits the moonsault off the top for the win. Mm -hmm. This was um, one of those little matches, I think, that was meant to showcase Hanako's skill and what she's learned in the last little while with EXV before going on her U.S. tour. And I felt that you're absolutely right. She did get a power advantage throughout this against Mayu. Um, something, I don't have anything really to add about the match, um, but something that I had noted before, I wanted to kind of loop back and, and ask you, do you find that Mayu has been kind of consistently wrestling with a little bit more of an aggressive edge over the last couple of months? And do you think that that is leading somewhere? Do we think that that's just, the peak of the evolution of that, what she's going to do. I think it's more just the evolution of what she's doing. I don't think it's going to lead to her, her having any issue with her teammates or having a heel turn or anything. I think it's just that she's really mm -hmm. ramping up her intensity in ring just to show more fire, show more uh, charisma, things like that. I think is more or less what it is. I'm going to ask you this question again, probably in a couple matches, because I felt something noted with this faction overall that I feel I need to really point out again. Well, I, I think the faction as a whole could take a, a step in m maybe a different direction as a whole, mm -hmm. but I don't see her stepping in a different direction from the faction. Oh, yeah, 100%. No, I don't see her leaving the faction at all. I see her kind of taking the faction with her on the ride, if you will. Yeah, I could, uh, as a whole, yeah, I know what you're talking about later on this show. I mm -hmm. can see the faction getting to more, becoming closer to a tweener faction, uh, getting more, a little more serious about certain things and getting a little, let me, like, getting more intense about a lot of things anyways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I don't have anything else to add to this one. 
So we move on to the huge match on this show. It's Saki Kashima versus Aya Sakura. Aya immediately attacking. She hits drop kicks and, ki- and hits kicks to the head. But then Saki catches her with a Kishikase and gets the win in 26 seconds. Who did I piss off? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll probably ask the question again the next night. But, like, who did she piss off? This poor girl. Um, yeah, I felt that the intro, intros, both these girls' intros was longer than the match. Yeah. Um, you know, I did get to like she was kind of showing off her karate skills with the kicks and stuff like that. But at one point, Kashi, your cat, Kashi, Saki just dodged it, grabbed her, and just rolled her right up into the Kishikashi. I was like, what the frick? I I looked away and missed the end. Yeah. That's a little sad. I was a little sad for her. It started, then it ended, and I'm like, what the hell just happened? Like, I, 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 geez, I, I went and got the official time of the match on Cage Match, and it's like 26 seconds. I'm like, that seems about right. So sad. So sad. Yeah. I got nothing to talk about for this one. Too. Yeah, no, because there really isn't anything else to talk about. The match is so short. We talked about everything. We, we move on to a five-star Grand Peak pre-qualifying match. It's the, the finals in this block. Uh, the mm-hmm. winner will get into one of the blocks. Uh, I think it was a one of the B block uh, qualifiers. Uh, the winner here will get. So. It's you and I, Yeah, because the other one on the next night was for the a, one of the A block uh, mm-hmm. spots. The so Yuna Mizumori versus Waka Skiyama. Uh, Waka with those Waka weapons early, sending out uh, Yuna out to the floor. They end up brawling on the floor. Waka gets a Waka ride on the floor, but Yuna runs her into the apron. Slamming her back first, and they uh, Yuna does a run around the ring shoulder block on the floor. Uh, she gets a Billy Goat back in the ring. She gets a Billy Goat curse. Uh, that that half dangled angle. Yes, I noticed that. Uh, the walk gets to the ropes. Um, uh, walk gets some walk weapons and uh, gets some walk weapons on the ropes, but she only gets mm-hmm. two out of that. Uh, running walk a weapon, and then the walk hits the top rope. Goes up and hits the top rope. Drop kick. She gets a straight slam, jacket slam, but only gets two. Uh, she goes to do it out of the corner, but uh, Yuna stops her, gets Waka on her shoulders, and hits a Miramare shock for two. Uh, Waka unloading with slabs, goes to the second rope, and gets a second rope st- uh, straight jacket slam, but only gets two. Yuna gets the sit-out attitude adjustment, but only gets two. She runs off the turnbuckles into a splash, hits a running lariat, uh, to win the match and join the five star Grand Prix. Uh, this was such a fun match. Um, I don't I don't think I got to mention it to you, but I wanted to, but I think it was late when I was watching it, so I didn't message you about it. But um, yeah, this was a really great, intense match because both of these women have been fighting so hard and working so hard for this company over the last couple of years. And uh, this was so, it was, a, it was a fun match for me. Um, there was one point where Waka was on the outside of like on the apron and she dove through the bottom and middle rope there. The low to, pay. Yeah, to the inside of the ring to trip Yuna oh, no, while she yeah. was running toward. Well, I guess it would technically be like she did come with a lope roll into the okay. ring. Sure. Okay. <laughs> she did like a little lope roll, which tripped Yuna on the ropes and set her up to to kind of take her out there. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, she followed it up with a drop kick on the rope there. Um, the walk of weapons, plus I called it the sliding walk of weapon, not the running walk. The same difference. Well, no, like there's it. one where she ran and jumped in the air and hit hit the hip attack. Oh, that's so the one I was one where Yuna was on the ground and she did the running off the rope and tushed the face. Yeah, there's what um, what I was talking about where she ran and jumped up and hit the walk weapon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So many walk weapons. This one, mm. Waka was on fire. She also hit that walk ride. On Yuna on the outside, just kind of walking her around the ring a little bit. The ref just yelling at her. Um, there was also that one point where uh, Yuna did the entire kind of victory lap 
shoulder block to walk on the outside there. I really enjoy that. What I really enjoy is that Yuna kind of brings an almost Yano-esque humor with mm. her without it being to the point of annoyance that it yeah. usually is for me with Yano because she's such a good wrestler on mm. top of that. Yano is too, but Yano definitely more specializes in an amateur wrestling mm. kind of thing, I think, whereas Yuna is just a great old power wrestler. Mm. I love it. This was yeah. a fun match. Yeah, I love these. I'm, again, I'm disappointed in not seeing Walker go through um, yeah. into this. And then now knowing we're only getting two people from EX out of the five of EXV in this tournament with uh, today's announcement from Mina Shirakawa. <laughs> yeah. What? what? I don't oh, know. Mina Shirakawa is going to America for the rest of the summer. She's announced. She made that announcement today. Uh, she's gonna go join Hanukkah. I I don't know if she's going to join Hanukkah, but she's joining essentially joining Hanukkah in the in the United States for the rest of the summer. So, hey. so yeah. I, I, I I call I called it Mina and, and Mercedes at uh, Capital Collision. They're both gonna be there, so it's possible. They're both can both can be America. It's very possible. That could be. It could be. I just, mm, you know how I feel about that. The crossover with the title feud and stuff would just be weird to me but i mean i guess if mercedes finds herself without an opponent because let's do it shenanigans might as well yeah so we move on to tam nakano versus her young stable mate sayaka kurara <laughs> this, is weird. this is weird i didn't take a lot of notes for this i'll admit uh me neither. Wanna... it was a good match uh Again, there's some fun, fun little stuff. I love Tam when she gets, gets that wrist clutch and she starts kicking people like in the back and front a few times. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, yeah. I really showing off a good bit in this match. I thought she got the, a lot of good offense in while making Tam still look very strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the end. Uh, I, I'm just gonna jump towards the end because I didn't take a lot of sure. notes throughout. Uh, I gets an acid drop, which is, where it's like that Shinrai, but you run up and then you jump out. Into the You're, into the cutter. It's Sayaka, Sayaka. No, oh, yeah. I wrote Aya in here. I don't know why. Uh, I, you know, I, Aya already fought. Remember, she had the shortest match. They're the same person to me. I'm sorry, they, Billy they, Billy. Those two just seem like I literally wrote Aya every time I took notes in this match. I mean, there's an Aya in the middle of her name, but you're kind of missing the first and last bit. <laughs> Yeah, so Sayaka uh, gets an acid drop out of the corner, but I can only get a two count. That's where it looks like you're running up for the uh, slice bread, but then you push out into that cutter. Uh, mm -hmm. She only gets two. Uh, Sayaka unloading, but Tam bridges up, so Sayaka starts attacking more. She goes for a move, but Tam hits a super kick, then hits a spin kick to the head for two. Tam hits that running knee to the face, but again only two, so she picks her up. Bridging Tiger Suplex for the win. Mm -hmm. I I didn't actually take very many notes other than some of the ones that you mentioned. Um, yeah, this was just a fun little match. So I felt this was like a nice way to show off Kurara. Mm -hmm. Sayaka Kurara. I just love saying her name also. So, so we're going to move on to a 10-person tag match. Yes. It is the stars team of Hanan, Hazuki, Koguma, Momokogo, and Saida taking on the brand newly named Neo Genesis, Azumi, mm -hmm. May Sarah, Mio Amasaki, Starlight Kid, and Suzu Suzuki. Yes. Yes. There's some Neo Genesis right there, baby. Yeah. This makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. Um not like um Mio, I think she still had the same gear, but the oh, new hairstyle and is a new gear. That's all of them have brand new gear for this. I knew Azumi's was, I knew Starlight Kids was. May Mays is oh. like, oh yeah, also new. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. the new hairstyle on Mio, at first I was like, mm -hmm. But I actually quite like it now. I feel that it matches her personality because we're seeing a little bit more of the um, giddiness from her that we mm -hmm. didn't see 
from her when she was in Queen's Quest. She was kind of stoic, a little bit more, I don't want to say good girl, but it was definitely more the vibe that I got from her. I'm mm-hmm. getting a more carefree kind of variation of her in Neogenesis. So yeah, take us into it, man. Yeah, I'm going to put that graphic back up. Uh, yeah, I, again, I wrote down, I really like Mio's new look. I, I, again, it's... It is it is a change in her look. I like the the, the hair change. I think it looks really good. Everybody's mm-hmm. looking. Uh, Starlight Kid. I love the brighter colors in her in her gear. I mm-hmm. remember, uh, Suzuki. I like the look, the change, going to the full pants and everything too. Uh, mm-hmm. Mamie going dark, which is which is going from her right gear there to her dark gear. It's like oh okay. Mm-hmm. And Azumi's kind of plays off her older look, but goes a little more like more neon with it, which I I like all three. Mm-hmm. Her hair also kind of reminded me how Momo Watanabe was doing her her hair a few months back. Yeah, uh, I I uh, and to Hazuki, I love that orange and blue gear that she that she's wearing in this match. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I was I wrote that down also. Something about that gear just looks so good on her. Like it matches her skin tone perfectly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I'm just going to go through a few spots in here that I really did like. Uh, Azuki and Starlight Kid just wildly brawling at one point in this match, just swinging for the fences at each other. Hazuki drops mm-hmm. Starlight Kid, but Starlight Kid comes back with a drop kick and hits a springboard cross and then another drop kick. Uh, she ste- starts stepping on the face of Hazuki, then steps over and hits that standing moonsault for two. Uh, mm-hmm. That's where FWC gets uh, Koguma comes in with Hazuki and they double team Starlight Kid and Hazuki has a beautiful brain buster for two. Yeah, I, I love that brain buster. It looks so good. <laughs> There's a few times where all five members are in the ring beating up on one person in this match. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. And um, unfortunately for Neo Genesis, it was Azumi quite a bit. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> Mio gets a tornado DDT to Hanan, and Azumi comes off the top with a beautiful double stomp, but that pin gets broken up. Uh, it was a beautiful spot. La Mystica by Azumi to Hanan into the armbar, into the double armbar, into a pin, and then they tr- roll around trading pinfalls. Azumi gets a head kick, but gets lariated out of the destroyer by Saeeda and uh, Hanan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then Hanan rolls her up for two. That that lariat. To stop the destroyer, it looks Brutal. great. Brutal. Yeah. Brutal. So the end of this match comes. Everybody's coming in and out, just hitting each other with big moves. Starlink mm-hmm. comes off the top with a high cross to a bunch of people on the floor. Uh, we get an at the MX German combo by Mei Mei and uh, Suzu Suzuki uh, to Hanan. And Hazumi comes in, hits that beautiful Canadian destroyer for the win. So good. What a debut. Mm-hmm. So you gotta look back. It, Stars has always kind of been the faciest faces in this company. I would say second to God's Eye, who are kind of like almost that like paladin level pure. Would you would you yeah. say? Um yeah. but like there was things in this match that made me say that they're starting a slow dissension. Now, Hazuki has always been savage. We've always talked about her savagery and her brutality and how just just zero to a thousand she goes. But like Ida now and even Kaguma and Hanan and even now, they're starting to show these little darker things where like they would there was one point where Hazuki was choking. Um I think it was Mei Mei in the corner mm. while <clears throat> Ida was doing the chops and then Momo was also holding a leg. It's like, that's not something that they typically do. That's like an Oedo Tai thing. That's mm. that's typically a heel thing. And they were doing these little nuances all throughout the match. I, th- I, th- I think and I honestly kind of hope that we are starting to see what I would call the cruel irony of a heel turn with the stars faction a way to tie can't be the only ones mm-hmm. repping this ish so like who better than to than to have the last people you would expect kind of turn i don't know it kind of feels like it's heading that way anyway yeah. um there was one point where um the 
that double team by May and Suzu on Hazuki, where May May did the the little hop to kind of get Hazuki to duck down and then um, fed into a high kick by Suzu. Mm-hmm. Um, then they did like a flip over power bomb and then a rollback where Su- Suzu did the drop kick and then they both popped up, did a double drop kick and kip up. Mm. They were so in sync. They're so good. I'm like, oh, yes. Suzu Suzuki is back. And I'm so excited. Um, there was one point where um, Mio had to run in and do a save on Azumi. And she ended up hitting a, I think it was a tornado DDT, where she like ran up the rope and spun around. And is that what that is? Yep. Yay! Um, tornado DDT. Yay! <laughs> Gold star Melville. Um, yeah, the, uh, just the timing no, it, on it. Bronze, bronze, bronze. Rude, rude. Um, the timing on that had to be so precise because they were in the middle of a move. So if she had done it any later or any earlier, she could have probably effed it up. She was so perfect in her timing with that. I loved it. Um, yeah, that's all I got on that. All right. So, yeah. so post match, uh, they did get uh, Neo Genesis to get the mic. Azimi says, Yes, 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 we won. And once again, we and everybody else, we are Neo Genesis. And then uh, Mio Masaki gets the mic out of everybody. It says, From now on, we want to create buzz not just in the pro wrestling world, but all over the world. Never good. He goes, Nice to meet you. But all in Japanese. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So cute. So cute. I'm excited. I, I and again now, especially now with Neo Genesis here being the f- kind of new faceiest face faction, um, mm-hmm. I feel that a, a stars could move into more going more heelish, and I don't think it would mm-hmm. hurt anything. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's not supposed to be like I. I wouldn't want to interpret it as a bad thing. I, I again, I don't feel that Oedo Tai should be the only heel faction yeah. kind of holding it down there. I'd love to see that kind of frontier change if you will yeah. and, and maybe they can become the burnt out stars you know they're, they're, they're stars burned out and now they're all dark and evil oh uh, okay <laughs> i don't like, know just the way it came out sounded bad or they can become <laughs> the burnt su- out stars like same girl same they can, <laughs> they can become they can become the supernovas you know, when a star explodes, it goes supernova, so they can be the supernovas. That's the evolution of a star, really. There you go. Mayu Iwatani. Or they can become the black holes. Is what a, a supernova turns into a black hole. They can become the black holes. <laughs> you know, evolution. it wouldn't be too bad. I don't know. It just I, mm, It's mm. just the evolution of a star, you know? It is, yeah. I think supernova is probably better. <laughs> yeah, we move on to an eight person tag match. It is Empress Nexus Venus, Micah, and Mina Shirakawa teaming up with God's Eye, Saya Kamatani, and Queen Quest. Uh, or, sorry, and Queen Quest, Saya Kamatani, and God's Eye, Siri. I got that backwards. Taking on Oedo Tai's brand new member, Konami, Mama Watanabe, Raka, and Takla. I guess I'm not brand new member, but returning member, Konami. Mm-hmm. After mm-hmm. returning Siri, former following- member following week and costing them the tag team titles. Uh, I love the new the, that new black look on Momo and Ruraka. Looks fire! Yes, yes. I really like it. The one thing that I thought was really a little funny, though, is the little emblem on Ruaka's chest. From far away, it does look like a little cross. So when I first saw it, I was like, why is Ruaka wearing like a little naughty nurse outfit? It was it just from far away it does look like it, but it works. I feel like it works. The overall look works so so well. I love it, especially with what we saw the next night. Yeah, again, this is a big a, another again, one of these bigger matches. I'm only just gonna go through mm-hmm. a few of us. Uh Siri though early, just taking all it she wants to face off with Konami, but Momo comes in and she just goes all in on Momo with the kicks and the attacks. Konami ends up tri- tripping her, pulls her out, and then all the way to Ty's fighting with uh the other ladies on the floor. Um mm-hmm. 
Konami spank Sayaka Matani at one point, which I laughed at. I was like, oh, come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so glad to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good spot. Mina ducking Ruaka and does that little the slow booby shake, and then she ends up mm-hmm. fighting off the double team and hits and gets ties the legs of Ruaka up uh, like Moodle Lock style and grabs mm-hmm. Momo and hits a flatliner, stretching the legs of Ruaka while flatlinering Momo at the same time. I thought it looked great. Yes, yes, that was really really cool. I didn't. I th- I wrote down a figure four weird lock thing. Like, yeah, it's, it was. It's like the tie up for the what before when you're going to go into the Moodle lock or, or the Immortal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Micah then comes in, they follow it up with an electric. Her and uh, Mina hit the electric chair splash on to Ru Aka. Um, mm-hmm. there's a quadruple team uh, on Micah and Ruaka gets a by a way to tie, and then Ruaka hits a beautiful fisherman suplex for two. Uh, Micah slips an attack, hits the suplex, but Ruaka comes back with a beautiful looking tree slam for two. Um, Suri comes in fighting off a double team, taking Ruaka down. Micah comes back in with a hard lariat to Ruaka and gets a two. Uh, the end of this match comes short arm lariat by Ruaka to Micah, but she is cut off up top. Micah and Saika Matani hit the top rope shoulder shoulder block power bomb combo, and Micah follows it up with a Zack Driver two for the win. As the announcer is saying, the Japanese one is the Michinoka driver. Zack Driver 2. That's what it's called. We all know that. It, 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 was, it was renamed. Well, apparently, the renamed Japanese it. commentary that were doing it don't know that. So maybe you should get on letting them know that. The um, man the man uh, t- named Taka Michinoku renamed it the Zack Driver and gave it to Zack. So it's officially the Zack Driver. Well, maybe he should let everybody else know instead of the wall of his ret- hotel room so that the commentary can call it by the right name. But in, mm. in the meantime, I'm going to call it what the commentary called it, which was the Michinoka driver, too. Um, so there was one point when they were fighting on the outside. Did you see Konami yeeted Suri into one of the spectators? Oh, did you actually hit a person? Oh, that's great. This poor man was running for his life. And there was a person in the way. He could not get out of the way. Suri Suri took a good old bump on him. What an experience as a fan. Lucky Um, guy. Lucky guy. (laughs) Uh, There was one point where, I can't remember, I think it was Momo and Konami uh, threw Saya and Suri into each other at one point on the outside. And they kind of like, the way they kind of hit each other was a little... It was a little hammy. It was a little funny. Mm. A little campy, if you will. Um, but yeah, Konami um, not t- pulling any ish with Shuri. Fucking hell. They were kicking the crap out of each other. Konami really stiff with her kicks on Shuri, and she was pissing her right off. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a... Um, I think you mentioned the point where... Um, I think it was a Doomsday device you mentioned. Micah and Kamitani. Uh, it was like down. a shoulder. It was like a shoulder. Like Kamatani come off the top of the shoulder block. Well, uh, Mike hit the power bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That looked great. Um, there was the a tower splash that Micah and Mina did um, without Azina in this one. I like the setup for it. It was quick. Yeah. It was seamless. It was perfect. Just up and down and good. Yeah, the electric chair splash, or she just it's just up, yeah, splash yeah. down. Honestly, I like that was just their tower. I, I yeah, it's, it's just a, it's a two person version of a Venus tower. I'm I'm gonna assume because can't really do a Venus yeah. tower with just two people. <laughs> I mean, they seem to do it pretty good. Yeah, I actually um, like I like it better than Venus tower, honestly. Yeah, like I said, it was seamless. Like the, yeah. the way they just she they they clearly like had done it a couple times beforehand. It just the way she just hopped up there was very seamless. Um, there was one point where Micah really muscled Ruaka up for a suplex. Um, really, really impressive. I mean, world champion, ladies and gentlemen, she is power. She is grace. Uh, there was a desperation power bomb by Ruaka. I can't remember who it was on. Um, I think it was Kamatani, um, but Shuri came in for the save and the kick that she 
planted on Ruaka was brutal. Mm. So stiff. Oh, my God. You would think she was hitting Konami on that one. Um, there was also a high kick that Shuri hit on Momo at one point when everyone was popping off their stuff. Mm. That just looked sick. So sick. Momo, oh, Momo went down like a sack of potatoes. Um, yeah. The last thing I want to mention, Shuri was really on a rampage by the end of this. She cleared house for Mike had to pick up that win. Mm. Um, yeah. What a great kind of... I want to say pop off before some big ish goes down. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah uh, Siri got the mic after. She says, "Hey Konami, it's tomorrow. Be prepared for a one on one in the ring." Then Mike gets the mic and says, "Hey, wait, hey, wait a time. I'm going to crush your boss. A way to tie will be disbanded tomorrow." Uh, and says to the audience, "I'm looking forward to see you again tomorrow. Thank you." Yeah. Mm hmm. Wow, wow, wow. So that foreboding. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, you got anything else on this one? Are we good to move on? No, no. I, we are good to move on. Future of Stardom title match. It is Lorena versus Lani Yamagi. Again, I thought really good match uh, between mm -hmm. these two. I didn't take a lot of notes in this. Uh, Rena, mm -hmm. really nice octopus uh, lock in turning it into a roll up for two. I, I like the transition there. Uh, Rana with just some serious uh, kicks throughout this match, like just mm -hmm. just really laying them into Rina. Um, yeah, uh, Rana getting a beautiful sweep uh, to Rina and getting into the cross armbar, but uh, gets stacked. And but Rana kicks out and holds on to the cross armbar, forcing Rina to have to fight to the ropes. I really like the transition there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Rina getting that second rope double knee drop just looks. Just looks like it kill. It would kick. It would just destroy your midsection. She misses mm -hmm. it off the top uh, and gets rolled up. Rana comes back with this running pump kick uh, for two. Just looked really good. The end of the match though. Uh, Rena hits a kick, goes to the top, drops the double knees off the top. But Rana kicks out a two point nine nine nine. Rena then picks her up for the pink double or the gory special drop for the win. Yes. Yeah, this one was difficult for me to kind of take notes on because it it was very much almost like a transitioning grappling kick, like striking kind of thing. I felt like it would be a lot of like kick, 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 kicks, judotas, judotas. Um, but still very impressive match. Um, Rip has been a very dominant champion as the future of stardom champion. I've been very, very impressed with her run. And every single match she puts so, so much into and pulls so much out of her opponents. This was no different. Um, I've always been a fan of, of Rana since she's kind of come on to the scene. Everything about her is selling me that she's going to be a future superstar. In this business. Yeah. I don't have too much more to add to that. I really enjoyed this one. I just didn't take a whole ton of notes on it. Yeah. So we got a post uh, post match uh, promos here. Uh, Rena saying, I've tied the record for most title defenses with my 10 successful events. Well, Yamagi, I know you've done what you've done in other organizations that achieved results, but I've experienced more than twice as much as you have. I still won't lose, you idiot. And then Rana comes back saying, Rena, no. I went to an, I went to another organization less than six months after my debut, and I've been working hard and producing results. Well, I was runner up in the catch the young wave uh, block issue in the in the runner up in that tournament, which is awesome. Uh, and mm -hmm. I win today, so I know I wasn't very good at finishing today, but I have a goal of definitely wearing the future belt. So I want you to keep improving my title defense record. I urge you to keep improving. I don't. This is a weird translation. She's saying it. she wants her to keep winning so she can break the record. Uh, Rena says, "I don't need you to tell me that. I won the future belt during the summer holidays, and then the new blood tag belt the other day. And I'm the 22nd champion uh, future. Next time you break the record for most title defense, who's my challenger? Well." <laughs> Her challenger is her exact mirror. Hina walks into the ring. It's her twin sister uh, and says, first of all, congratulations on defending your title. You're now tied with Hanan. And then next one will be a new record. 
I can't let Rena break the record now. Plus, she's got new blood belt and is on a roll, so I can't let her keep going like this. I'm the only one who can stop Rena now, so let me challenge for the future belt next. Rena says, you're late, you idiot. During the time you were resting, I got many, many times stronger. This is a referring to the fact that Hina went back, took some time off, went back to school. Well, Rena mm-hmm. can wrestling. Um, I want, I don't want to be lumped together with you. Well, I'll do it. So I look forward to it. <laughs> like, she's like, I, screw you. You're not getting this, but now nah, I'll give it to you at the end. It's just like weird, weird. I mean, it works. It works. I'm looking forward to it. Me We've too. been seeing them kind of meeting on and off in little tag bouts throughout the last little while. I'm excited to see them one-on-one, see what, see what they can give us. Mm. Yeah. So we move on to the main event of the, tw- uh, the July 27th show. It is Siri Anu versus Natsy Poi for the Wonder of Stardom Championship. Beautiful all new white gear for Natsy Poi. Looks really good here. Mm-hmm. Um, anu turning her back right at the beginning of the match, and Nat just runs up and Germans her just, just before the bell even goes. Then they then this is where they go into like high speed mode where each person's mm-hmm. dodging, and then Nat, uh, Nat sends Anna to the floor, and she go, Nat goes to the top, but Anna kind of like moves way away, so Nat can't hit the high cross, and it, it's just and it just goes crazy. Like they're going so fast here, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just they uh, Nat's point getting that like Muda lock on the legs and bridging back, but grabbing the arm in a Fujiwara armbar instead of grabbing the head. I really like the variation on that. Mm-hmm, really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to talk about that move again on the, <clears throat> on the for the 28th because they did her and Pam did a double team version, which I thought was really cool. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, Nats boy really targeting the shoulder of Anu throughout the match. Um, uh, beautiful Northern Lights suplex by Anu right into a straight jacket choke. But Nats boy fights and gets a foot on the ropes. That that torque she gets on that straight jacket choke is crazy good. Um, mm-hmm. one point they're trading shots in the middle of the ring. Anu hits a kick. Natsupoi comes back with a spin kick, dropping her. Hits that kneeling spin kick that I really like. Um, Anu stops her from going up. Nat ends up hitting another spin kick to the head. She goes up, gets that ferial splash off the top. Uh, Nat goes for a victory roll, but Anu stops it and hits a beautiful wheelbarrow German suplex. I was like, yes, great counter to the victory roll. Um, Anu ends up going up at one point and hits Natsu Poi's ferial splash off the top, and I was like, "Oh!" Ho, ho. Uh, and then she hits a beautiful headhunter for two. Um, just just the back and forth here with these two is just amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll go to the end of the match here. Anu stops Natsu Poi running, uh, and catches her in a half and half suplex with a bridge for two. Natsu Poi fights off the arm trap German. Which are the? I keep saying Japanese Ocean Cyclone Suplex, but I've known that move as the cross arm electric chair driver. So I don't know if they just changed. I don't know. It just because the way I can't remember who used to do it, but yeah, I've never seen it done that way. But the Ocean Cyclone Suplex, whatever you call it, but uh, Nessie Point blocks it. Um. Ends up, uh, Anu, and then, but she blocks it, gets and goes for a German, but then Anu reverses her and gets that ocean cyclone suplex and, and gets the bridge for two. Uh, they start trading shots, uh, they're trade, they're they're trading bridging Germans, and they're each rolling around with the pins, trying to get the pins. And NASA boy catches Anu out of nowhere, one, two, three, and we have a new champion for the first time in two weeks. For the, the, the first, because Anu just won that title back like a week and a half, week and a half, two weeks ago. So, becoming their hot potato title. Yep. Um, yeah, the the jump start by Poi in this one was interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't really expecting that. Um, you mentioned that. There's a hair toss that Poi did to Anu when they were on the apron, which ended up he I think Anu was actually like on the second turnbuckle rope thing mm-hmm. in the corner. 
She just yeeted her off of there. She bounced off the apron and then hit the ground. That looked oh. nasty. Yeah, because there was a there was a fi- there was a fisherman suplex first by Anu, and then there was yeah. the whip off that whip off the top. Yeah, those are brutal. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was the crossbody by Poi, um, and then the suplex by Anu, both on the outside, looked really really good. Poi's really good at those crossbodies. She has such like perfect form. <laughs> it's so nice. Um, there was one point where um, it's the ferial splash mm-hmm. that she does. That, that twisting splash off the top, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there was one point where she was setting up for that, and I really appreciated her going over to the corner, looking back, and then going back, readjusting Anu, and then going to the top to, to try to hit it. Um, it just, I like seeing those little subtleties that kind of like make it feel kind of more real mm-hmm. you know what i mean um it, it instead of someone trying to do something that maybe they weren't too comfortable maybe doing maybe she was a little too far a little too crooked who knows i like seeing the little corrections as they're kind of happening um and the last thing i wanted to mention was there was um one point where uh, Poi took a drop kick from Anu, mm. and it uh, she kicked her so hard she cartwheeled. It was great. Oh, uh, just some of the way these two were selling for each other's moves was just phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, it was great. I got nothing else to add to that. So we got a long post match here. Uh, next yes. one is the mic. She says, "Sorry, I won today. I finally got to wear the long-awaited white belt, and finally, I finally beat Sayori. Sayori, there is no finish in uh, finish line in our fight, right?" And Anu nods at her. Uh, next boy says, "We are always at the starting line. I feel like we've reached a new starting line again today, so this is never over. Uh, I will always. Uh, I, I think we will always be like that from now onwards. What do you think?" And she points the microphone at her. Anu says, there's no other way to say it. That's true. And that's the boy goes, Sayori, there are some things that Poi holds dear. In order to make her dreams come true, hard work, determination to never get up. She is John Cena. Uh, and of course, Poi, a little bit of misunderstanding and unfounded confidence. Again, John Cena. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can't argue with that. So not, so you can't see Natsu Poi. I mean, she does move her hand in front of her face a lot. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Bye, boy. <laughs> the the three knuckle shuffle, you know. <laughs> oh dear. Well, we all know what the five knuckle shuffle was a reference to back then. I says, I believe that uh, with that, her dreams will definitely come true. But even a person like me sometimes get worried or desperate depressed at times like those it's my teammates that support me it's my rivals that inspire me both of those are sayori i won't lose next time either absolutely she holds up her pinky finger and anu kind of responds with the pinky finger from outside of the ring uh next boy says yeah boy yeah boy i thank you so much everyone i don't want to end it i don't want it to be over but i next boy the wonder of stardom champion who won today would like to end the day with me after all, again, this is all direct Japanese translation, so the wording doesn't make sense. It's just I'm using direct translation. After all, summer is Natsupoi summer. Uh, from now on, Natsupoi will rise to the highest level of stardom. You might think I'm a bit mistaken, but that kind of mistake isn't so bad. Everyone, please continue to follow me. Bye, Poi. I'm loving her like little interactions that i'm seeing with the corner cams that they have now mm-hmm. where she, where oh, she, she gets up, up in there like does the whole yeah i love it i love it the na- the nasty boy cam yeah yeah, yeah. then tam's been popping up in there too it's adorable yeah so yeah I, you got anything else on the speech no or? no i was gonna say i don't have anything to add to this i look forward to see uh what she does for her first defense and me too so we're gonna move on to the July twenty eighth show. Um, oh, there's, uh, there's, there's, there she is with the title around her waist. Um, <laughs> before we, I get into it, 
Melbog, tell us about the pre-show match because I didn't <laughs> watch this one either. <laughs> Make sure I read it right. Okay, this was the four-way. It was Ruaka versus Iyuna Mizumori versus Momokogo versus Ria. Um, yeah. Yeah, I didn't take too, too many notes. There was one point where um, Yuna, there's some animosity going on between Yuna and Ruaka. I don't know where it started or where it's come from personally, but they they were um, like Ruaka shoved Yuna at the beginning of this and they were fighting like cats and dogs for the rest of the match after that point. Um, there was one point where Yuna attacked uh Ruaka and Momo with a crossbody, and um, Yuna was pinning, but Ruaka ended up, like, she was pinning Momo, and Ruaka ended up breaking up the pin with a, I believe it's a senton, where she just runs and, like, falls the back on her. Looked really, really cool. Um, Yuna, at one point, using uh, Rihanna as a bat, she put her on a fireman's carry and just started spinning her around, and her legs would go out and kick people in the face. Um, I have to always shout out Ruaka's um, bottom rope crossbody as she did a Momo. Um, but in the end, um, I can't remember what Yuna's finisher name is. It, lo- it looked like a blue thunderbomb, I think. Hmm. Or she pin- she um, hit Ruaka with it and pinned her for the win. Ooh. Surpri- Ruaka was not happy. Yeah, it's, surpri- but- it's a surprising person to be pinned in that match with Rian and Momo in there. Yeah, yeah, I thought the same thing, but it looks like there's some pot stirring happening with that. So maybe it's something that'll feed into the Grand Prix eventually. No, or maybe not. So, we'll, we'll see. So we move into the main card, and we get to kick it off with a high speed title match. This is so fast. Uh, they end yeah. up like fighting them, fighting out to the apron, and they roll back in, and then they keep running. May May gets a running cross. Asaya bridges out of that, hits a drop kick, sending Mate out to the floor, where she gets that springboard cross to the floor. Uh, Kamatani slowing it down with a knee bar, but May May mm-hmm. fights, so she gets the ropes. Again, they're just going nuts with the, when they're moving in this match. Uh, May May gets a roll ups into a super kick at one point. Then attacks Kamatani on the ropes and hits a springboard drop kick for two. Uh, May goes for a drop kick to the knees, and Kamatani jumps up it, like she dodges the drop kick to the knees and just jumps up and just stomps the midsection of May May. Oh, I love that. Uh, and then she went up to the top, followed up with a drop kick off the top for two. Um, they're dropping each other with they both drop each other with kicks. It was beautiful, just beautiful sequence right there. Uh, they mm-hmm. both do the kip up and they start striking. Uh, May gets a roll up with Kamatani, and then Kamatani gets one. Uh, May May tries the sunset flip, but Kamatani uh, flips it back. It just both are just rolling around with these covers. Kamatani comes in with the pump kick and then a spinning roundhouse, but misses the tornado kick, and May May catches her and, and gets that. Backflip into the crucifix bomb for the win. I love the way she sets up that crucifix bomb. I think it mm-hmm. looks like she's standing there and then backflips into a crucifix. It looks so good. It does. She's so quick and so good. Um, yeah. Got a lot of the stuff that I actually wrote down. The only thing I wanted to mention was the post. Yeah, this. This warmed my heart. Mm-hmm. To see them celebrating her. Even Suzu was the first one up to her and be like, hey, you won. It was so sweet. And mm-hmm. for, it was super nice to see this side of Starlight Kid go. We've kind of been seeing her as the heel for so long. It was nice to see all these ladies rejuvenated again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it, they all feel like they have a new kind of fire in them. And I, and yeah. I like that like, Starlight Kid has like a new something. Everybody has a new, new drive, something. new motivation. Yeah, I like that. I really do like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I as well. Yeah. So, are you got anything else? No, no, I'm good. All right. We move on to a five star qualifier for the B block or for the A block. I think this was the A block one here. It is Lady C versus Miyu Amasaki. Um, Lady C, uh, I like the, I love those cat he- ear headphones. Like they're headphones. Like what I'm wearing. Yeah. Cat ears up here. I love those. They, they look, look so cute on her. 
Yeah. Lady C with this beautiful slam then gets a she really worked in the triangle in this match. Uh she, yeah. she's getting technical here. Like I mean, it's like God's eye training that's really starting to pay off for her. But Mia gets a foot on the ropes. Uh Lady C stops the pendulum GDT into that giant so wing, but and then but only gets and then gets a two count, then another two count, then another two count. Just keeps trying those two counts. Mm -hmm. Um Beautiful rings of Saturn by uh, Mew, but Lady C literally stands up out of it and slams her into the corner. Uh, Mew comes back, dropping Lady C and gets the ring to Saturn again. This is where Lady C has to fight and get to the ropes. Um, they're attacking each other at one point in the match on the ropes. Mew gets a pendulum DDT. She goes for the Angel's Wings, but Lady C fights her off. They end up trading strikes to center, and C unloads. Dropping Mayo. Mew fires back, unloading on Lady C, but she duck and she ducks the Lady C Lariat. And Mio gets that beautiful tornado DDT for two. Um, Lady C comes back with a big lariat and the haluba kick in the corner, but she can only get two. Uh, Mio reverses a choke slam into the DDT, but as she comes off the ropes, Lady C catches her and hits the choke slam. Uh, Mio gets off the shoulders uh, and she gets the, the half O'Connor roll. Uh, the pinning, the pin, the pinning thing that uh, Mariah May does, uh, and she gets the win and enters the five star Grand Prix. Yeah, it's it doesn't have that many X's at the end, there. Eh? It's not sorry. <laughs> oh, we're not supposed to mention them here, are we? Um, yeah, I don't yeah. have a whole ton to add. To this one, you kind of got everything um, covered. There, there was one point where um, Mio did reverse the choke slam, only to eat it again not too long later. Um, it, I thought this was a really fun little like match between former friends and allies, because um, who knows each other better than themselves? You could see these two reversing back and forth, transitioning back and forth. You could tell how well they worked together in the past it was a little almost um what's the word bittersweet mm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah got it all <laughs> no that's all that's all all right we move on to the farewell match for hanako against aya sakura um and uh hanako really working uh the arm bar early on uh, really over that arm. I guess a triangle, but Hanako lifts her and slams her down to break it. I love that, love that power bomb slam. Um, later in the match, I gets a repeated chest kicks, goes for a flip kick into the or the wheel kick into the corner, but she ends up getting caught and Hanako walks out, just driving her down into a backbreaker. Looks really good. Mm -hmm. um, Hanako uh, cuts the eye off up top, pulls her down into a big scoop slam. Uh, she steps over into a Boston crab, then into the single leg crab. But Aya fights and fights and gets to the ropes. Um, Hanako goes uh, to the goes for goes to Mount Aya, but Aya pulls a triangle arm bar. But Hanako eventually does get a foot on the ropes. Uh, uh, Aya comes off the top with the Hell's Guillotine, as I like to, as as uh, Ren Narita calls it. With that shin to the neck kind of thing, uh, then hits our mm -hmm. house to the head for two. Um, Hanako gets a slam and hits a haluba kick in the corner, but only gets two. Aya with roll ups, but Hanako hits a run, uh, gets out, hits a big boot, the delayed suplex, only get two. So she gets her up into the torture rack. K O D, and Hanako is, gets the one, two, three. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, Hanako, I remember a couple reviews ago for Stardom Review, I mentioned <clears throat> that I felt that um, there was one point with, like, I think it was Shuri who she was facing. I can't yeah. remember. I think it was Shuri. Um, it, it really showed how Hanako didn't have a lot of defense um, against that kind of technical wrestling. Um, once you kind of got her down into a position of vulnerability, she was not very capable of doing much. Holy heck and crap, girl, who is your trainer? 
they did a wonderful job in getting you ready for this U.S. tour, especially if you're going to be facing Janai Kai. You need to know how to do some ish. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this match really showed off. She had some training done. She, she's now very, very adept in defending against technical kind of wrestling. She defended against Aya very, very well. I was super, super impressed with this. Um, I don't have a whole lot to add otherwise, except for after the match. Weird little moment where Hanako extended her hand to Aya. Aya didn't shake it. She did some kind of weird eye thing at Hanako. And then seemed surprised when Hanako retaliated by smacking her in the face. Girl, you disrespected her. Don't be surprised. She's going to disrespect you back. What you yeah. Doing? yeah. Weird. It was, yeah. it was. It was odd. And I'm like, you deserve to get smacked. Yeah. So then I, let's re-ask the question again. Who did she piss off? At least oh. this match was longer. She got to show off a lot in this one against Hanako. But yeah. man, who did she piss off? I don't know. Oof. She was. Uh, she did have a bandaid on her chin, so she's clearly training. Still training yeah. good. Yeah. I don't know. So we move on to a trios gauntlet match. It is a way to ties Momo Asanabe, Rina, and Tekla versus Stars, Suzuki, Koguma, and Saida versus Gazai's Hina, Rana Yamagi, and Saki Kashima versus EXV's Mina Shirakawa, Waka Skiyama, and Zena versus Neo Genesis's. New Genesis is New Genesis is New Genesis. Is, uh, Azumi, Starlight Kid, and Suzu Suzuki. I think I'm gonna be hung up on how we say Neo Genesis is. Well, it, how do you pluralize it? How do you plural? You're not even pluralizing it, you're you're giving it. Like, because it's the apostrophe S, right? Yeah, but it hardly has an S. So you, it's an apostrophe. apostrophe. But you don't put an uh, apostrophe S after an after where the ends of S. So the genesis. Well, you also typically don't put three E's at the end of someone's name, but here we are. The neogenesis. <laughs> no, because that's no. I think it's neogenesis. That makes sense, though. I know, but like. Uh, giving them ownership of it. I don't know. Let's get into the match. So we start with EXV versus Stars. Uh, Waka gets some Waka weapons to Koguma. Stars triple team Waka lift Ida, and they lift Ida to set drop her into a senton on Waka. Uh, Koguma gets her little stomps and the big stomp on the rope to to Waka for two. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Stars, I'll get EXV on the bottom ropes and get that triple face wash from running boot. Ida tags in. To literally harshly chop walk in the chest and then tags back out. It was just like, that was mean. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, the end of this, though, comes uh, Waka ends up blind tagging, get, getting a blind. Like, Tina was in for a bit with Ida, and they did some really good chopping back and forth. Those two. Yeah. Damn. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Waka ends up blind tagging in off Xena. And then comes in behind Ida and catches her with that tiger suplex roll uh, for, with the bridge for the win. I was like, and you can see Ida get up and be like, what the hell? Like, she was like, she was like, like, she was surprised that that, that happened. I was surprised. Waka got a win. I know. Waka got a win. win. Well, kind of, because you don't really, you know, you don't technically get a W unless you last till the end of the match. So. We can give her this, okay? We 100%. have been waiting for this. I, I agree. I agree. I agree. Waka won. The Waka wins the first one. So, oh no, it's a wait of time. Mobile Watson, and Abe, Rina, and Tekla. What a time immediately jump EXV. Uh, but Waka gets a roll up on Rina. Gets broken up, but oh, yeah, it's a triple, tri start, just starts triple stomping her. Amina uh, fights off uh, Rina and Momo. Gets a the figure four stretch DD the figure that or the yeah figure four stretch DDT combo to Rina and uh, Momo. Uh, Momo hits Mina with the bat, and Thekla and Momo hit double kicks to the head of Mina, and Thekla hits the double underhook deadfall to Mina for the win. 
Uh, I Tecla lo- was monstrous in this. She looks so good. Like she's she's whatever this is on her return. She has been just. I don't like what she's doing. I don't like that she's an idol killer. I don't like that because some of the some like Mina is my favorite. Literally, all the women that you like, she are on her hit list. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> some of the women, like, but I think everybody in the company. Tam? I don't. I'm not, a, I'm not a huge Tam person. You're bigger Tam. Tam Nakano. Yeah, you're a bigger Tam fan than I am. I thought you were a big Tam fan. Huh? Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. well then. So we move on. Oh, wait, a time versus Neo Genesis. This is a Yazoo me and Starlight Kid. Uh, Neo Genesis end up like attacking first or like yeah. kind of getting on and they, they uh, triple team Momo. Um, Azumi gets a standing octopus and Suzu and Starlight Kid and then getting uh, Thekla and Rena down and hit like. Dual standing moonsault. So I was like, "Yeah, right." Standing moonsault, baby. Well, I, I was think- like, "Did she always do those?" I yeah. couldn't remember, but I was like super impressed with it because they were pretty much in sync stereo. It was crazy. Yeah, Azumi gets Momo into a double arm bar, but Momo gets to the ropes. Momo reverses an octopus lock into the beautiful dude buster. The pink is broken up. Azumi ends up hitting La Mystica, goes for the roll-up, but Momo ends up turning the roll-up onto, onto Azumi and gets the win. So it time moves on to the final contest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, uh, you mentioned pretty much everything. The spear that Suzu does, where she ends up doing the flip through, mm-hmm. almost like a, a bit of like the gene blast. Mm-hmm. I love how that looks. Love how that looks. I didn't write down who she hit it on, but I like it. I yeah. think it was Momo. I think so. No, it was Thecla. The Thecla? Yeah, because Thecla yeah. does this here too. Yeah, that's, that's why. Yeah. That's I remember thinking, isn't that ironic? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything else to say on that one. So, the final team entering this match is Gadzai, Therani, Yamagi, Hina, and Saki Kashima. That's the weirdest combo of that team. Um, Gadzai yeah. attacked before the bell. Uh, Momo and Thaka double team Hina. Uh, Momo gets a running PK for two. Uh, Rina hits the double knees in the corner, and then the Northern Light suplex to Hina for two. Uh, Hina fights back, hits a running neck breaker to Rina for two. Inverted triangle arm bar by Rina uh, to Hina, but it gets broken up. Like, Hina spent pretty much almost the entirety of this last part of the match. This last part in in the match, her teammates never really even came into this. Um, yeah, well, Kashi Saki, I almost said Kashi again. Um, Saki, understandable, fighting yeah. against a former faction. Yeah. So way to tie triple team. Hina Arena hits a double knees off the second, but the pin gets broken up. Arena uh, misses off the top, and Hina gets Arena in the Gato clutch for the win. Oh, wait, it's like something about this. And they attack well, the match until it gets all broken up. I mean, they technically beat two other teams before these guys came in completely fresh and, and took the win from them. So, yep. understandable. 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 Oh, we're there? going off the rails again. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have anything else to say. Yeah. <laughs> again, it was, it was a fun little match. But yeah, it was just it was like these weird little short individual matches. Yeah, yeah. I felt that they did do a lot in those little matches, though. It felt like oh. a very intricate kind of setup. Yeah, and again, like between all five of those teams and those four mini matches was seventeen minutes, so it could have been way longer. Yeah, and that, but I think if it went longer, it would have dragged. Like, in my opinion. yes, so I think that was the perfect length. Everything felt short, concise, but impactful. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. So we move on to Siri mm-hmm. versus Konami, the battle of the former tag team partners. Like, God, the, the Konami picture freaks me out. It, yeah, yeah, I mean, but like then the whole attitude that you know accompanies that version yeah. of Konami, like, 
well, the attitude, be scared. Well, the attitude alone attacking Suri during her entrance, uh, on in the entranceway. Mm-hmm. Now they end up brawling, fight back to the ring. Suri's just incensed, and the match starts. She's firing shots at Konami. Uh, then she gets dragged out by a weight of tie, tossed into the chairs. How is the ref not throwing it out at this point? I don't understand. Um, is it a no DQ match? No. Because you know what the finish is. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Konami and, that. Konami and her team and they start piling chairs on Siri. Uh, they end up brawling on the floor because Siri gets out. Konami gets a PK from the apron. Uh, Siri ends up like hanging up, hanging uh, Konami up on the top rope with like a jawbreaker. Um, just the knees and the kicks and just the brutality of it of this match was insane. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just they're just just kicking the piss out of each other here. Uh, the ref gets mm-hmm. taken out all the way to tides in. They all attack Suri. She ends up fighting them off. Hits a code breaker and a bridging German to Konami for two. She gets that stretch muffler and the goes for that step over on the head. But the ref gets distracted. Momo hits her with the bat. Konami hits yeah. more kicks, and she gets a Kamagoye, which I'm pretty sure is what they the the, the announcers called. Um, but he but the, she only gets two. Um, Suri comes back with a kick to the head, a, a, a kick to the head, uh, then a buzzsaw kick, and finally hits the um, the uh, Kazuchika Okada Emerald Flosion, but only gets two. Um, Suri gets her up on her shoulders, going for an electric chair, something. But Konami, that she Konami gets past the can by her teammates and starts spraying the paint in the face of uh, Siri. And this is where the ref calls for the DQ. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so Thekla comes in. That was the line. Yeah. So Thekla comes in, and starts whipping Siri with the belt. Uh, Konami mm-hmm. gets, uh, I think it's uh, Rena's chair. And smashes it over Siri's head. The chair, mm-hmm. the chair seat just pops out. Uh, mm-hmm. God's eyes trying to get in here, but they keep getting uh, taken out. They're beating up Siri, kicking the piss out of her before they end up leaving. Uh, and then mm-hmm. Siri just gets angry and like chases Konami to the back. Yeah. But again, mm-hmm. insanely good match, and I cannot wait for the sequel. Yeah, because we know there is going to be, especially when Ami Sore comes back from wherever it is that she is. It's only one member of God's Eye. Oh, besides Alice Inc., who I would love to see back in a stardom ring. But we also have Inaba, who's going to be joining the ranks for a little while while the Grand Prix is going on. So I think it'll be good to see um, some backup for Suri, because it kind of felt in this match like she was a one-woman army mm. against the army that was a way to tie. It was just a constant wave of overwhelmment, and it kept pissing her the hell off. By the time, like, the end kind of wound down, I felt that we were, like, about to see her go, like, super silent. Mm. Like, it was just, she was so angry. Um, but what level of Super Saiyan? I is don't it, know. Is it is it four? Does she become a monkey? Well, I don't does... know anime, so I don't know. Oh, I assume you make a Super Saiyan reference. I assume you knew what I was. What no, talking I about. just see things on my feed, and they get ingrained into my memory because ADHD. Um. Uh, what do I add to this? Jumped her. She kicked the crap out of her. Shuri is mad. Um, I mentioned it on Japanese Wrestling Update. I, I'm going to re-mention it now. It was, it's ironic, isn't it? That Konami talked so much shit about Saki Kashima joining God's Eye. And how Oedo Tai things never change yet here she is standing across from her former tag partner it's interesting um yeah i'm very curious to see how they evolve from this and how they take the story i feel like it's going to be a a very impassioned and and full of rage 
uh, story as they go forward with Konami kind of acting like a ha 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 I've got the better of you I'm in your head kind of yeah. heal I'm excited for it yeah I think it's gonna be it's gonna be I, I look forward to seeing how this plays out because I think these two could have some really incredible matches together uh huh, uh huh, and the setups that they could do for it too. You know, I love my promos. You love, and they always do promos and interviews for this. I feel like they could say some really interesting stuff, get people excited about it. And the thing, how will will Konami start trying to screw Siri out of uh, winning the five star? Like, there's like, like what can happen mm-hmm. there? Like, there's some, some, there's some good story to be told with mm-hmm. what could be going on this summer. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Excuse me. We move on to a the seven uh, the seven main event, a tag team match. It is stars Hanan in my in the IWGP Champion Mayu Ibatani versus Cosmic Angels Tam Nakano and the Wonder of Stardom Champion Natsu Boy. Uh, Nak gets that uh, Moodle Lock armbar uh, on. I think it was on Hanan. But then mm-hmm. Tam comes in and starts pulling a her own like she no but like she does the pose but then she grabs she yeah she has the arm she gets another Fujiwara armor on the other arm while doing the Tam pose I I thought I love that little double team there I thought that was great I thought it was absolutely adorable it's like a little that thing that I've been saying quite a bit that touch of flair that sets them apart from everybody else because who else is doing that. Yeah, uh, Tam and Tam and Nat hit that double head hunter to Hanan. Beautiful spot there. T- Nasty boy just like twisting the hair, like spinning and twisting the hair of Hanan, then just whips her by her hair. I'm like, ooh, this she's a vicious little fairy, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, man, I took so many notes in this match. <laughs> Of course you did. A non uh, and it's it's uh, some attacks. It's two famousers to Tam for two. Like I'm a big Hanon fan. <laughs> like, like I, I think she's I, good. I don't. I have nothing against him. I think she's awesome. I'm just. I, I think she's good. There's just people I like more than her in this company. Um, Maya comes in, kicks Tam in the back, and Hanan gets a bridging follow away slam for two. Uh, Tam and Nat get sent to the floor. Um, and Mayu and Hanan go to the top, but they come back up, sending Mayu and Hanan to the floor, and they go for their dual dive, uh, Nat and Tam, but Nat dives onto Mayu, but Tam, like, stumbles and, like, falls down a little bit and, like, just jumps off and kicks Hanan in the head. I was like, okay. She made it work. She made it work. Uh, it looked really awkward, but she made it work. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tam, Never works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back in the ring. Uh, Tam uh, Tam hits a knee to the head of Hanan off the top. Nat hits that ferial splash, and Tam hits a running knee to the head, but the pin gets broken up. Uh, towards the end of this, Dual Angels wings by Stars uh, into the bridging followaway slam by Hanan to Tam, but uh, Tam kicks out at two point nine. Mayu hits the dragon suplex to Tam, and Hanan hits a backdrop suplex, rolling through into the bridging backdrop suplex for the win. Um, The new entrance gear for Meltier is Mm. super cute. Those little skirts that they wore were just, mm, they were so adorable with those little gold metallic belts to match them i love their choreography as well it's not like crazy like cosmic angels kind of crazy but it's like sweet and enough that go that to go along with the music if that makes sense because they come into a very sweet kind of ditty if you will Mm -hmm. um yeah i don't have anything else to add to that so post-match Hanan gets my case. Like I got the three count from uh, Tam on Tam. Uh, I haven't been able to achieve a good result since Cinderella, but this win is huge for me. If I keep going like this, I'll win five star and become the woman of spring and summer. I like that. Uh, Tam says, Hanan, who do you think you beat? It was Tam Nakano. I'm not going to let her run away with a win like that. I'll make her a poor Cinderella. Mayu Itani says, good evening, everyone in Hokkaido. Hanan, you finally beat Tam. You should be more happy about it. You've 
You've been making a scary face a lot lately. Hanan is scary. Hanan is scary. Hanan is. Scary. <laughs> uh, your good points are that you smile, are cheerful, and positive. You need to go around the country and show that smile to more people. Nan's all happy. Uh, Ibatani says, Tam, are you okay for your first five match of five star? Are you well? How are you? Tam says, has, not, has Tam ever been in high spirits? Ibatani says, indeed, that's what Tam is like. I want to get the three count at five star and one day put this belt on the line against Tam Nakano. Oh, well, I might break her spirit at five star, though. Tam says, don't say it first. If This is just the weirdest conversation to have after him. Yeah. If Tam says, if Tam gets a three count from you, then Tam is the only one who can take your belt. There's and then Iwatani says, there's nothing more to say. Nasty boy, yesterday you became white champion or white belt champion, right? There may be people today who are seeing Nasty boy in her champion outfit for the first time. So why don't you say something? Nasty boy says, everyone in Hokkaido, I'm Nasty boy, the 23rd wonder of starting champion. I'm Nasty boy, yeah, boy. <laughs> Hanan then points at Natsupoy's belt and Hanan says, I'm not challenging for it yet, but I'm definitely going to get that belt. A little exchange. I didn't have subtitles for that, so it's good to know what yeah. they said. And again, I like that they're setting up two distinct matches here. Hanan versus Natsupoy for that Wonder title and Tam mm -hmm. versus Mayu for the for the uh, IWGP title. I like that. Well, maybe mm -hmm. we'll get maybe we'll get the women at on one of the uh, New Japan shows in the next little while. I, I would love to see that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now let's get to what we know we really want to talk about. I don't want to talk about it at all. Rude. Well, it makes me un it makes me ha unhappy that this happened. That's all this happened. Come on. I know. I know. Uh, How do you think I feel? <laughs> uh, really, really good. <laughs> oh. I know you feel great about this. It's for the World of Stardom Championship. It is Micah defending against Natsu Katora. Tora debuting her new look all in black. That shaved blonde hair. Back to the, their classic shaved head look. Or shaved short hair look. Uh, and they just start smashing each other. These two are just beating the piss at her. Uh, Tora starts working on the arm. That's what her like her target is in this match. Mm -hmm. Or um, Micah's right arm. Um, they go to the floor. Uh, Tora whips her into the chairs. Micah tries a suplex. Comes tries to come or sorry. Micah takes Tora to the floor and whips her into the chairs. She tries for the suplex. Ruaka attacks. Uh, Exv comes to make the and Sai Kamatani make the save. Uh, Torres ends up spitting like water in Micah's face, uh, but misses a swanton off the apron. Micah then hits the suplex on the floor. Again, back in the ring, they're working. Uh, Torres really working over that arm early on with arm bars, just stomping the arm, working it like in the ropes. Uh, Torres gets a cannonball in the corner. I love that freaking move. It look, always looks so good. She uh, does it so good, too. Yeah. Uh, later in the match, Torres slips off the shoulders, hits a headbutt, but Micah drops her with a shoulder block, gets her back up to that power slam position, then hits a twist into the sidewalk slam for two. I love that mm -hmm. move. Uh, Micah, mm -hmm. puts Tora, Micah puts Torres up top and gets the Hemica bomb, but Torres ends up pulling a triangle off of it, a triangle arm bar off it, and you see Micah like fading a bit, and she's fighting and fighting, and then she, she then uh, Torres transitions into the cross arm bar on the injured arm, but Micah gets uh, to the rope, or gets uh, gets to the ropes. Uh, Tora goes to the top, hits a frog splash for two, then gets her up, hits a meter mare shock for two. She goes back to the top and hits a swan tom. Micah kicks out of the 2.99999. I'm like, thank Christ she's going to survive. Um, yeah. Uh, Tora misses with the pipe. Micah gets a lariat. Micah hits the discus layer, but only gets two. Uh, she goes to the top, hits a lariat off the top, follows it up with, uh, for two, then hits a Zack Driver two, but Tora kicks out at two. Uh, Hammerlock Zack Driver, but Kamatani pulls the ref out on the pin. And this is where you're like, oh, what's happening? And she starts staring down Micah. And then Micah gets turned around. Tora gets the mist and the Death Valley Driver, but Micah kicks out at two. Tora goes up. 
It's the swanton off the top. Sits on Micah. Pull, cradles the leg. One, two, three. Natsuka Tora is your new World of Stardom champion. The dark side has won. Especially not jumping for joy wearing that shirt. <laughs> well, I don't have a Club Venus or an Empress Nexus Venus one like you. <laughs> I, I I do have a Club Venus, but... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what a match. Holy heck and crap. On top of the new gear, the new hair, she also uh, rocking some new makeup. She still had the the blushy strips down her face there, but the intricacy of her eyeliner. Plus, she had I don't know where to get them myself. So I'm pretty sure you can just order them on Sheen or something. But there's these little balls that girls are gluing onto their faces to look like they have piercings where they don't have them. So I don't know if you noticed, but Tora had two right here. Mm. And they stayed on the whole mat. I don't know what glue y'all be using over there. But like, unless you got the piercing, but it just looks like the regular balls that everybody else has. Um, but yeah, they stayed there the whole time. She looked great at the end of this, even covered in the blue mist. Um, 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 um. Um, yeah, um, um. Tora schooled Micah for quite some time in this match. Mm. It was it was a little scary for a little bit. Um, and the what was it the triangle you said that it was? The the second time I think she got her in it. She had her in it for a very long, long time. Um, started to get really, really concerned. Um, I also started to get a little suspicious about the attention that people at ringside were getting. Camera kept panning over to Saya, uh, panning over to Thecla. I was like, mm, that's going to be a thing at some point. <laughs> and it was. Yep. Um, the betrayal by Saya Kamitani which led to the new crowning of the World of Stardom champion Ah, see, here's the thing. Micah is one of my girl crushes in professional wrestling. Seeing her being the world champion has been a dream, especially at a very awkward time in stardom because of the, the Mari Gold. Mm. I don't want to say controversy because it's not really a controversy, but like the, the Mari Gold. There you go. That's the word. Um, you know, much like Shingo Takagi was the IWGP champion in one of them most troublesome times of NJPW. Um, she carried this title very well and with several dominant defenses um, underneath her. This was a tremendous title run for her and nothing to be, you know, upset about. But Tora has been chasing this belt since we started reviewing this ish. Mm -hmm. It's been too long since the evil in this company kind of reigns supreme. And now look at them. They got the World of Stardom Championship. They got the Goddess of Stardom Championships. They have the Future of Stardom Championships. They have the New Blood Tag Team Title Championships. This is the most dominant faction now, I would say, within Stardom Wrestling. Yeah. It, it it really is, and again, it's just like it's scary, man. Mm -hmm. And then I heard about some stuff that happened today um, at at Stardom. So I'm like, oh Jesus, that this team keeps doing. Oh, um, oh you said, yes, you said, I you heard about that. Picture. Yes, yes. I was gonna say, did I send you that? I'm pretty sure that I was the one who sent you that. Yeah, you did. And that that this is even bigger. Like it just we're gonna that show will be coming out later this week, next week sometime. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about this this weekend, the 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 prelude to five star and the goodbye mm -hmm. to Mina for the summer. Um, we'll talk about that uh, in the ne in the next while. Um, but we did Japanese get a wrestling update. Here. Yeah, we did get a post match. Mm -hmm. uh, and it says Sapporo, a new champion is born. Micah, you're one of the really strong wrestlers. Honestly, 
You were tougher on me than anyone I've ever fought. Uh, and she yells, Kamatani! Uh, Kamatani boos as she stands up. Uh, Kamatani slaps Micah, who's down on the mat. And she says, Micah, I came here today to make you cry. Goodbye forever. Uh, Tora then gets to the mic back says, How many years has it been since I joined a way to tie? The single belt was always so far away. No matter how hard I tried to destroy the company, I always thought the single belt, no, the red belt was still a long way off. But today I was finally able to wear it. This is Rick and Saya Kamatani changes into a new t shirt uh, mm-hmm. here. And Torres says, I have nothing left to do with the Oedo tie. As of today, Oedo tie is disbanded. Idiots, idiots, idiots. Listen, today is the end of Oedo tie. As of today, a new unit, Hate, is born with Kamatani, Konami, Thekla, Rina, Momo, and Raka. Hey, get excited, you idiots. Are you watching? All you idiots you, who can only rate us on social media from today, hate will take over this shitty organization and become the number one heel in the world of women's professional wrestling. That's all. Sleep in fear. Yeah. I mean, I would say she's already the healiest heel in women's professional wrestling right now given what she did Mm -hmm. given what she has been doing she's been working with a faction that has been elevating and dominating the heel game and then with thecla's association i don't know how loose or tight it is with the war dogs i mean the war dogs have been on a war path in new japan if she kind of takes some pointers from them, there's nothing going to be able to stop this faction. I'm kind of here for it. I, I, I'm I, sad that Micah is no longer the champion, but I'm excited at the potential direction that having a heel faction on top of this company could do for it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. I look forward to it, man. I really do. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember how we were, we were joking on Japanese wrestling update about Fuki can death and her social media. Well, since the way to ties dead, it's been disbanded. She never named Fuki in that thing. So Fuki's not a part of this unit. Goodbye. You Fuki. weren't paying never... too close attention to that thingy that I sent you, were you? Goodbye, Fuki. We never need to see you again. Good riddance. Sir. You're Sir. not wanted in professional wrestling. Sir. You clearly weren't paying too much attention to that clip that I sent you. Damn it. (laughs) The the clown is there. And as I said on Japanese Wrestling Update, it would just make sense for her to just go to Black Gear. And guess what? Damn it. Guess what? (laughs) Guess what? Damn it. Uh, Damn it. This is what you you get when you argue with me about the Michinoka driver. Damn it. Damn it. (laughs) Damn it. Damn it, but Zach what, when Driver. When you're done damning over here, I think I think we've made it to an hour and a half. I think we've talked a lot of wrestling. I think we've watched a lot of wrestling. Mm-hmm. I think the storm outside my house is raging. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think we're getting rain here. I can hear it pounding against the window that's in front of me. Yeah, I hear nothing. Well, you are also in a very different area than I am. I've got a window right next to me. It says it's supposed to rain tonight. I'm only like 30 minutes north of you. You are also in a very different area than me. I'm only 30 minutes north of you. It is Alberta weather. You don't even understand. When I lived in St. Albert and I lived on the south side of it, my friends lived on the north side of it, the weather was different. It's true. It's true. I've been thinking the north side is different from the south side a lot of the time. See, there you go. Take us into the outro. Well, we have come to the end of another episode of Stardom Review. Uh, you can find me on the X at that candidate, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that candidate dude. You can find me on Facebook at Andre Melbourne Wrestling Talk and right here on the YouTube page, youtube.com slash at Andre Melbourne Wrestling Talk. Please go over to Facebook and check out BAM Weekly. 
Uh, there'll be some changes coming very soon. Uh, there's a little bit of delay and some stuff that's going on over there. But that's coming very, very, very soon, eh? Uh, so go check that out. Join the Facebook page, and you can uh, get talking with us there. You can find me over there chatting in the chats over there. Uh, and then our audio will end up as part of that once everything is relaunched. Uh, you can also find me over at twitch.tv slash our local establishment uh, or at youtube.com slash at our local establishment. Uh, Marvel Talk, uh, which will be coming this Wednesday. What were we talking about? Ant Man. Ant Man. Ant Man. Ant Man. I talk about Paul Rudd's debut. In the Marvel and uh, the MCU, and I love it. I love this one. Of my this, this is a top movie for me, but it's not very high on my list. It's just it's one that I can always go and enjoy. It just doesn't it doesn't sit super high on my list. It's just it's it's a good fun comedy to go watch at any time. So mm -hmm. we'll talk about that this coming Wednesday. Me and old Ed. So check us out over there, uh, 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you can also find us over at Backbreaker Video. So I'm gonna cast it over there a week later. Uh, YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker Video. You can find all of Mike's live content over at twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref. You can find him every Wednesday, Saturday, and paper through Sunday doing his AEW watch longs. And the rest of the week, he's playing video games. I know he's playing it tonight. I missed him because we were recording here. I know he was gaming tonight uh, over there on the Twitch. Uh, if you want replays of gaming content, go to YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker underscore gaming. You can find stuff from him, Mr. PJC, this little guy right here, Mr. Rick Jules, and their frequent guest. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. We love Kayla J here. Yes, we do. Melba, uh, where can we find you? If you wanted to follow a Melba, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melba. You can follow her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Mel Ball Collins. You can also find her on our local establishment programming Japanese wrestling update with this guy every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Unless it's not. And then we'll let you know on social media. Uh, this week will be a pre recorded episode because we will be attending Tiop Talent Wrestling, where we'll be seeing Mr. Mr. T. No, Top Talent. Oh, okay. I thought we had started a random game of charades. We will be seeing Mr. Dijak take on Weston King, which I'm pretty excited about. Mm -hmm. And Me apparently too. Joey Janela is going to be there. I don't know who he's facing, though. Uh, they still have more matches to announce. They they announced a few today. But they had a few out, uh, at least of, as of today. So, so One month to advertise, announcing two days before show. Yeah, Make they Well, they announced the King of the Triple Threat match, so... Hey, we'll have to talk about that after. I need to know who's in that. Anyway, we we will be at Top Talent Friday, so it will not be live. It will be a pre-recorded episode talking all about the world of Japanese professional wrestling. So stay tuned to hear when that is coming out. You can also catch me on Astro Bazaar's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We should have an episode coming out this week because some crazy ish happened over the weekend. And we need to talk about it. So, yeah. Stay tuned to our socials to see when that's coming out. If you're wanting to watch Stardom Wrestling, we will leave a link in the description box down below. It is stardom-world.com. It is approximately 999 yen or approximately 10 Canadian. Shout out, Sean Spear. Why are we one minuteing? Why are you evil? Why are you evil? Because I am. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> anyway. It's 10 Canadian. Shout out Sean Spears because we love Sean Spears. Um, it's an amazing price to watch some amazing women's professional wrestling. You can watch some of the stuff we talked about today and you can go back and say hi. I'll be right off there. I am no better than a man. Hi. Um, you can go back and watch some of the faces from WWE and AEW television like Jamie Hayter, Tony Storm, Piper Niven, Blair Davenport. I always forget what her WWE name is. Blair Davenport. Yeah. yeah, I know. I forget what it is. I remembered it. Gold Star Melball. I always call her B Priestley. Rude. Clap your face. 
<laughs> Andre, my trusted friend and colleague, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? Nope. Nah, I do. Uh, thank you all so very much. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and uh, all the jobbers that you know in this world. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> and that being said, I am your Melba. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Mm -hmm.